So, so firstly, let's look at how our moral condition degrades, shall we? Because it's important to understand how that occurs. Now, if we understand, firstly, that our parents, so I'll draw our parents, mum and dad, whether they were with us or not, had a certain collective condition. In other words, there's certain things that they agreed were okay and there's certain things that they also felt were not inside of themselves. In other words, they had belief systems and emotions about all sorts of matters. Every single matter you can consider, in fact, the majority of person on earth has a belief system about. Right? And these belief systems can be broken into lots of different areas. Now, some of the areas are moral in their nature. In other words, they affect not only our sexual morality, but they affect our morality in the way we act with other people whether we're even-handed in the way we handle other people, whether we're just in the way that we handle other people and ourselves. They affect our ethics. Whether we would do things to others that we wouldn't like done to ourselves and vice versa, whether we would want thing, other people to do to us things that we wouldn't do to them. And, uh, and that's our ethical behaviour. We also have beliefs about our sexuality generally often which are not in harmony with God, but in harmony with all sorts of earth-based concepts. So, for example, the average male on the planet has this belief that the average male needs to have lots of sexual partners because, you know, he's not built to have one kind of feeling. Right? And there is a feeling along those lines. The average female believes that the receiving of projections sexually is a measure of their attractiveness. So, in other words, the average female will receive sexual projections from men or other women even as long as those projections don't get taken into action while they're on earth they will receive the projection as long as that projection is a it has some kind of approval coming with it so in other words, as long as the woman feels good about herself as a result of the projection so so when a whole heap of people say you're really attractive and they're all projecting sexually at her she's happy with that so there is this openness you could say to the absorption, absorption of emotion of all sorts of emotions. Then we also have other belief systems that we could now here I'm talking mostly about the sexual related belief systems and moral related belief systems because these are the belief systems that generally cause a lot of our shame. Right? But there's all sorts of belief systems. There's religious belief systems. That will dictate how we feel about ourselves sexually. If you think about the average belief systems in most religions, you, you, if you look at the Christian religious faith, you can see that you know, women are not permitted to teach. They have to teach with a head covering. There's this sort of underlying implication because women are not spoken about much in the Bible, particularly in the Greek scriptures of the Bible. There's this underlying implication that women are the causes of most sexual shame. In the uh, Old Testament of the Bible, there is a long list of what women have to do in order to deal with menstruation, in order to be holy or clean. So there's this implication that what's happening to their body normally is not holy or clean. And so there's a, a lot of uh, personal shame, physical shame about those kind of things that are caused by religious belief systems. The same applies to the Muslim faith where the women have to go through certain processes or coverings over their head. In fact, many feel they have to cover their entire body except for their eyes, which is actually about the projections or avoiding the projections of men with regard to sexual projection. So, so in other words, there's a belief in the Muslim faith. Basically, the implication is that a woman is responsible for the man's sexual behaviour. Right? So this causes many women, of course, to feel quite a lot of shame when a man starts acting in a certain way that they feel is unwelcome. They, and when there's this underlying belief, they then start believing that they are responsible for the sexual behaviour of the male and therefore they start looking at themselves. What am I doing? I must, I've got to cover up more right? or something like that. Then we also have political effects on these kind of belief systems. In other words, what is our general belief in the country we live in? So in some countries, men and women are said to be equal. And I say said to be because it's not always the case. Even here in the USA, I think there's still a discrepancy between the average woman's earnings and the average male earnings. 
so which would tend to indicate that there is still a discrepancy. But uh, there are political belief systems here where women are allowed to vote, men are allowed to vote. Men, women have just as much right legally as a man. Whereas you go to other countries, so if, for example, if you're in Vietnam or you're in some African country or South American country uh, or some uh, of the other countries in Asia, you'll find that this uh, doesn't exist, you know, this equality. And in fact, there is still quite a lot of feeling that the woman is owned by the man. And in fact, in, other, in countries around the world, there's this belief that women can actually be murdered by the family if the family desires to do so as a punishment of the woman without there being any you know, recourse legally against such a, such a thing occurring. So these are a whole set of political beliefs now that have entered the, the framework, if you like, of the beliefs of mum and dad. Now, as soon as the child is conceived, most of those feelings are now projected to the newborn child or the newly conceived child. In other words, these feelings and belief systems and everything start flowing into the child. Now, once the child is born, the parents start acting out these belief systems towards the child. So they actually treat the child in the way that they have come to believe is the right way to live. Whether it's right or wrong from God's perspective is almost immaterial. Right? It's just what they believe is the right way to live, which is the sum total of all of these different belief systems inside of them. So now this child has, is growing up with some quite strong belief systems already inside of the child. Now, what does it do? It starts absorbing them, not just through the process of being around the parents all the time, because you know that whenever you're around a group of people, you start absorbing many of their belief systems, don't you? Once you start, when you're around a group of people. It's not only through that process, but it's also through the way in which the parents treat the child. So the child becomes treated in a certain way, in harmony with the belief systems of the parents. So if the parents believe that it's right to smack a child, then the child will get smacked. And in fact, if the Belief system of the parent is a religious belief system that if you spare smacking the child, you're spoiling the child. Now there's actually a God-based religious belief system telling the parents to smack the child, which that child will grow up with and eventually also probably believe that it's acceptable from God's perspective. So they'll even start believing things about God that are completely out of harmony with love, but completely in harmony with all of these systems. Huh? Now, some of the beliefs about the child are what you would classify, or what the average person on earth would classify as positive beliefs, but are just as negative as the so-called overtly negative beliefs. Now, if I can illustrate that. If both of these parents believe that the woman is more important than the man, now, that is possible for both parents to believe that, isn't it? So the average male in this audience actually believes a woman is more important than a man. Like, because you, many of you men are actually projecting at the woman that I want to serve you, I'll do anything for you. you know, just as long as you have sex with me, I'll do anything for you. Basically, that's the feeling. And that feeling is basically telling the woman in the audience that they are better than you, that they have a higher position, if you like, in terms of your eyes that they are more equal, <laughs> if there's such a thing. You know, it's like the communist viewpoint of more equal. And, um, and so what they finish up believing is that, so if this man has a very pandering attitude towards a woman, and this woman has a feeling that she's the, as the saying goes, wears the pants in the household, um, this family will believe that the woman is the most important person in the room, in any room. If this is a girl child, what will she grow up believing? She will grow up believing the same, that she is more important than any other male. Now, while that means that she will have a fairly good, uh, w what would normally be classified on earth as a fairly good opinion of herself, I suggest to you that this opinion of herself is highly inflated because it's not about equality. Right? In other words, she believes things about herself that are completely out of harmony with God's viewpoint on the matter. But she and her parents will feel that that's good. Does that make sense? 
So there are times when the projections of the parent upon the child are such that the child grows up believing that certain things are good when they actually are not. Right? And then also the child can grow up believing certain things are bad when they actually are good. For example, if these parents believe that it's never good to actually tell a person the truth about themselves, then this child will feel that every time somebody tells her the truth about herself, they're being unloving to her. That's what she'll grow up believing. So she'll grow up believing that it's right for her to reject anybody who tells her the truth about herself. She'll believe that's an unloving act. All right? So can you see there are times when this child now will believe there's certain things that, are they, that the child believes is good, but from God's perspective would actually be out of harmony with love. And there's certain things that the child believes is bad, but from God's perspective it would be in harmony with love. Now that creates a fertile ground for a lot of actions that are out of harmony with love in both directions. Now when I say in both directions, I mean actions taken out of harmony with love because you think you should be able to get away with it when from God's perspective it's out of harmony with love and then actions that are taken that are in, that are in harmony with love that you believe that are out of harmony with love <laughs> so it leaves a fertile ground for that to occur as well so you might tell the truth to somebody and then they get angry with you and then you feel oh I'm terrible it is my fault I shouldn't have said that no you should have said it from God's perspective but your belief is from this childhood belief that I've mentioned. Your belief might be that you shouldn't have said anything that might cause another person distress, even if it's true. Right. Now, once that occurs, and the reason why I've gone through that explanation is that once that occurs, the child will choose throughout its life to do certain things. Some of the choices the child makes are in avoidance of love. And some of the choices the child makes are when it thinks it's loving to itself when it's really not. So for example, if I'm a woman who's grown up in this environment where both the men and women think that it's great for the child to, to receive sexual projections from men as a way of getting the, their approval sexually, then this woman, when she grows up to be an adult, she's going to believe that it's appropriate for her to get a sexual projection from everybody possible and in particular men if that's who she received it from so if she received it from her father and it was done in this attitude where he didn't abuse her so called but he loved her then she's going to grow up believing that every man has got to project sexually at her to make her feel attractive and lovely and as soon as a man doesn't do that she'll believe that he's not a very nice man Make sense? Now if he's a man, so if we now swap it over to be male in this case, and he's grown up in a family where the father has been dominant, and the mother agrees with the father's dominance, in other words the mother supports the father's dominance, and this is just one scenario where it can occur, this young boy will then believe that from a sexual perspective he's king. And he'll believe that he should be able to go around doing any sexual thing to any woman and get away with it. Now society will try to pull him back into line to whatever is the social norm. But in his sleep state, there are no social norms to control his behaviour. So he will then do what is the social norm in his awake state, but in his sleep state, do something completely different. And if it's the girl that I mentioned, in her awake state, the social norm might be she's okay to receive sexual attention from all sorts of men as long as they don't harm her or be violent towards her. That's her awake state belief. In her sleep state, she's probably going to go further than that and believe that it's okay to have sex with these guys in order to get that kind of approval. Does that make sense? And this is why there is often a discrepancy between our awake and sleep state. The social norm will dictate our behaviour, but the emotional injuries 
will still be present. And those emotional injuries will be acted out whenever we are unrestricted, when we feel we're in an unrestricted environment. This is also why someone like a pedophile who has a certain set of social, a certain set of climates that are created through these things, the pedophile, the child as a, who, who's been harmed by the parents sexually in terms of belief systems, grows up to be a pedophile. And when, he, when he's a grown, grown man now, he believes that certain things are acceptable and certain things aren't. And he will believe, he will do what society dictates as normal when he's supposedly in company, but you put him in private and he will do what his emotional conditioning will do. Does that make sense? So this is why a lot of pedophiles that might seem normal in social situations, you know, they might be the church leader, even a minister, you know, like the local minister or someone like that in a, in a, in a social situation where he's looked up to and he seems like he's all pious and he seems like he's got everything under control sexually, but you put him alone and he's looking at pedophile pornography and trying to find members of his congregation that he can engage with sexually that are children. And it might take many, many years if not decades for him to be found out because he will be able to target the children who have internal shame that have already been prepared through this other process that I previously described. Does that make sense? Now, the question then becomes how do we address all of this? If we're in the position where we're now this child as an adult doing things that we think are alright but are obviously not or we're waking up when we feel ashamed which is a great indication that we're choosing to do things that are out of harmony with love particularly if we wake up ashamed that's an indication if you walk around life ashamed then it's usually an indication that you've taken on a lot of shame but if you wake up ashamed it usually means that you did things that even to your own mind in your awake state feel a bit off right feel that you need to be ashamed of now what we need to do is work out what we're going to do about all these things. Okay, so what do we do? Well, before you can change anything, you must first face the truth. But before you can face the truth, You've got to know the truth about yourself. So, the very first thing we need to start to think of doing is to want to know the truth about ourselves, whether we're awake or we're asleep. It's immaterial. We want to, we want to get to a point where we have a desire to know the truth. Once we have a desire to know the truth, a true desire to know the truth, God, through a series of processes and through our emotional condition, can show us the truth. So, for example, when you wake up feeling ashamed, there is a truth being shown to you. That something happened in your sleep state that you're ashamed of. That's the truth. If you wake up feeling scared, that's the truth being shown to you. There's something in your sleep state that you're frightened of. Right? That happened in your sleep state. Now if you pray about that particular thing, God through a series of events and through a series of things that happen to you, including what happens in your dreams and what happens in your experiences when you're asleep, will be able to show you what's happening. But you've got to be open to it. Otherwise you won't get shown but you can get shown quite easily, which is what happened with yourself, Si, right? You wanted to know the truth, and as soon as you wanted to know the truth, yeah. And I remember when, you when Selena first raised the issue in that discussion that we had, and remember I said to you last night how your face went really grey and you went out of your body while she was speaking. Like, and I'm watching, so Selena was sitting over here uh, in our discussion and you were sitting over there, and Selena's asking me a question about her sleep state, and I'm look, watching Sai. And I'm going, yeah, this, this, what, what she's bringing up now 
it's got a big effect on him because he's tuning out he's zoning out he fa his face went gray even like and he sort of went into that real zoned out spacey state that people go into that i observe in many of you often and uh, and you can see that yeah there's something that really troubles him here does that make sense now to size credit he wanted to know what was going on and over the next day or so he starts receiving dreams which is actually you telling you in your awake state what's happening in your sleep state many times or what the problem is emotionally All right. so many of our dreams are you setting up an event where you tell yourself something that you become conscious of in your awake state selena you want to just if we go to the mic so if he hadn't been <clears throat> open to that how would it have taken me a long time to get there on my own if I he have been hadn't working have been, on it for quite a while already if he hadn't have been open yeah if he yes. simply wasn't going to go there correct because he was well you know the relation in terms of your relationship so and if you don't mind me talking about it more no, clearly not at all so here's selena and here's Sai s and s does that mean they're the double s or the ss I better not call him SS there. You just get away with that. I'm not saying you're a good star or something like that. Um, so here we have a male and a female in a relationship. If the male is doing things in his sleep state that he never wants to become aware of, and the female is involved in some way in those particular events, right, then can you see that she has to be closed to also seeing the issue in her awake state? But as soon as one of them starts feeling there is an issue, and Selena, you started feeling there was an issue first, oh, some for time ago. For quite a while, yeah. I was waking up afraid. I knew something. So, was how happening. long have you been feeling there's yeah. an issue? Oh, uh, two months. Two or three months. Okay. So, yeah. And clenching my teeth at night for a long time. So you're waking up oh. afraid. Oh, pain. And, and, and in pain, waking up feeling yeah. quite afraid, waking up sometimes feeling ashamed. So waking up feeling a few, a few emotions, so you know there's a problem mm -hmm. then. So you were aware of the problem first, yep, and that's why you asked the question. But then when I started stating what could be happening, I didn't tell you both what was happening, I just said, this is you telling you that there's something going on. As soon as that started happening, so I started having an opening to the possibility of something going on. Now, if he refused to open to the possibility of what was going on, you can still go through the process, couldn't you, to see what was going on? Mm. Uh, but I really believed it was just me, all me. Okay, then this, yeah. but if you think about your emotional preconditioning, this is from, as we've discussed, as I've discussed with you, from mm. a child, this is something you have believed most of your life, mm. that if something goes wrong, it's my fault. So, <laughs> does that make sense? Yep. Oh, and yeah. And so this emotional preconditioning would have caused you probably to feel quite distressed for many years even before you mm -hmm. might come face to face with the fact that there's a problem. What generally happens though for the majority of relationships is eventually the person who feels there's a problem right from the start or from a certain point in time, over a period of years, they become aware of their behaviour in their awake state. Right? And so therefore they do finish up seeing that there is a problem. Right? Of course... If you could be aware of the behaviour in the sleep state, you'd know straight away, right? which, is, which is what the process is you've gone through. Mm -hmm. yep. But your emotional preconditioning caused you to send, then feel that it was your fault that you feel this way, rather than something that Sai might be doing that involved you. Mm -hmm. right? yep. Yeah, I was extremely grateful that he had that experience. Exactly, because, oh, it, because it if he didn't... It was a huge relief for me, yeah. If he didn't, you might have continued to blame yourself for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. Waking up feeling a certain way, not understanding why. Yeah. And, uh, and if he was unwilling to face the issue, it would have required you working through your emotional preconditioning first before you would have ever seen what was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So this is where if both parties are brave... Mm -hmm. they'll be able to face the issues of what's really going on yep. and there is a lot more sexual infidelity in the spirit world than there is on earth that's the reality 